And welcome back. Um, if you can hear it in the distance, our washing machine has just gone into its spin cycle, so <laughs> that'll sound absolutely fantastic. I'm still Rob Miles. I'm still writing games with C Sharp and XNA. I've been doing it for a while now. I think I might speed up. might do two really quickly just to see if I can catch you out. Anyway, today, uh, I said today, we're going to look at the business of fetching font. We're going to look at how you can draw text in XNA games. We're going to start by bringing in the actual resource you use to make the font. And after that, then we'll think in terms of how we're going to actually use it in a game. Okay? Uh, now we know, because we've been following this religiously <laughs> every Sunday, uh, that we can use the XNA framework. Uh, you can write your C-sharp programs, you can make games, and we've done things with the gamepad and lights and stuff. We know we can get input from the gamepad, and we know we can use this to control things and make gamepads vibrate. Uh, there's only uh, a few more things we need to know now to write every game that's ever been written. Uh, today we're going to look at how we're going to get text into the XNA game program itself. This is two stage. The first stage we get the text into the program and the second thing we do is use that to actually draw stuff. So there's a two, we have to fetch something and then use it to do the job we've got. Okay, that's how it works. Um, text, okay, this is a profound question. <laughs> I like the I like the fridge magnets. They look nice. I love you, Dad. That's so cute. Anyway, I digress. Um, text is made up of designs for different characters. Um, people get all worked up about this. If you get into the uh, field of text design and fonts and sans serif and, and queuing and, and, and ligatures and all kinds of weird stuff, there's actually almost like a sort of um, a whole bunch of people who get really carried away with this. And the design of text is something that people take very, very seriously. As far as we're concerned, a particular set of designs is called a font. It's a bit confusing this because font for many people means just one particular type of character. But actually a font in, in printing terms means an entire family of designs including things like bold, italic, uppercase uh, and lowercase characters um, and etc etc. And so as far as we're concerned a font is an entire family and then you go and say okay it's about 18 points big and it's uh, in bold uh, and it's italic and those are like different styles of the same font if you like so that's how um, the XNA kind of views it uh, and that's how we're going to view it too um, as far as we're concerned if you write a document you can pick loads and loads of fonts this is the display that I get when I ask Word to show me what kind of fonts it's got and as you can see there's uh, Consolas, Constantia, Cooper Black one called David that looks a bit hard to read. There's one called uh, Estrangalo Edessa, which looks quite cute, but I shan't be using that one. And Fang Song, which sounds great as well. Now, these are the ones that I get on my machine. Uh, yours may be a bit different because it all depends on what programs you've installed and what fonts they brought with them. Uh, all the fonts uh, on this thing have got a little little TT next to them there, which stands for True Type, and that's the design of the font. Uh, in one particular uh, sort of uh, uh, where the dots go and, and how the things are joined together and that can then be scaled up and down to provide any particular size of, of that particular kind of font. Um, X and A <coughs> doesn't provide any fonts at all. Um, your game when it starts up has no fonts actually as part of the game. Uh, we have to put those into the game ourselves. Uh, so from a starting, from st st starting, from a standing start your program has no fonts. XML's kind of sorry, XNA is kind of minimalist in that it gives you just the stuff you need and nothing more. So we have to then do all the work, bring all the bits in ourselves. But as we'll find out in a minute or two, it's not actually that hard. It's actually quite easy. Um, but before we do that, we have to step back a little bit because we have to think in terms of what a game really is. Now, if you look at the game, the game has a program in it. Sure, it has. Lots of other things as well though. It has images, that's bitmaps, that's pictures, that's character designs, it has sounds, um, and it has uh, 3D models, uh, soldiers, cars, houses, all that kind of stuff. And it also has fonts, uh, because whenever a game draws something, just like XNA, uh, the, the, the Xbox 360 has no fonts built in of its own, it only draws what it's actually uh, given as part of the game. So as far as we're concerned, all this stuff is lumped into 
um, game content, this is called. Uh, XNA does the game content management for you. If you look on the right, this is kind of like a very complicated game. It has audio, fonts, models, shaders, and textures. And these are all held in the content area. These are all lumps of stuff which XNA will look after for us. Now, this is kind of nice because it's one less thing for us to worry about. If you think about it, when you put the game on your Xbox, something has to get all those pictures, sounds, designs and stuff from your computer where you wrote the game onto the actual device itself. And the nice thing about XNA is that it does it all for you. Um, if you go and talk to a game studio about this kind of stuff, if you talk to a, a, a big game developer like Rare or one of the big ones, they talk about these things called content pipelines where the content flows through from one place to another. Uh, an artist or a designer creates the content. Uh, we then actually <coughs> build it into the game which is then written and developed and tested at stage three and finally at some point they all go all right we can ship this now it's time to sell the game and try and make some money and at that point you have to take all that content and package it onto the DVD for the customer to buy in the shop or for the uh, Xbox Live player to download as a big lump over the internet. As far as we're concerned think of it as kind of like a flow of work where you have graphic designers right at the sharp end designing the, the textures, the, the actual creatures, the, all the good stuff and then at the end of it you have a shiny DVD in a game shop which someone can go and buy and between those two points you have to have like a flow of material uh, where they create it, build it into the game put it into the, the actual game program uh, and then package it for the customer to take home and play. That's how it all fits together and as far as we're concerned this is called a pipeline. That's how XNA refers to it. Um, what we're going to do is actually push some stuff into the pipeline by adding it into the Visual Studio actual project that we use to actually make our program. I've just heard a worrying noise. Have I got... Oh, my microphone's still working. Sorry about that. <laughs> It, my computer goes clunk occasionally just to annoy me. Anyway, I digress. A Visual Studio project is, is, is basically a lump of stuff which contains all the files needed to make the game program work. And, uh, well, here we are. Um, this is the kind of default project you get at the start uh, with a little directory for content. And that's where we're going to focus our efforts right at the moment. Content is the place where you manage your game content. Now the nice thing as far as you folks are concerned is you have nothing new to learn because you've been using the Visual Studio tool right from the start. Uh, and Visual Studio is very good at managing content. It's not just games that contain things like pictures and sounds and graphics and artwork now. Lots and lots of professional programs do as well. And so because XNA is really a tool for writing, sorry, because Visual Studio is really a tool for writing professional programs that means it has content management built in as well um, we know that the little CS files here game1.cs and program.cs are bits of our game program code um, the thumbnail is the bit you actually see when you put the game onto an Xbox and the icon is the bit you actually see if you put the program onto a computer uh, and wanted a little picture which represents that particular application so we've got all that stuff a studio is good for all this um, and it makes sure for us that the game contains all the content that we're worried about. Um, if you want to add something, this is easy. Um, you basically tell the content system, okie dokie, I want to add something. I want to put something into the game um, and uh, you right click using the, the, the right hand mouse button, the one that you don't use that much, on the content item in the Solution Explorer on this bit here. You then wait for the add menu to pop up, you pick new item and then at that point we can go off and we can find ourselves a font. Ha -ha. Uh, it's not actually pirate based but <laughs> now let's not talk about pirate software, that's a bad plan. Let's just move on to the next slide, okay? When you add your content basically there's, there's three things that XNA lets you, lets you add. Uh, an XML file, an effect file and a sprite font. It's the sprite font that we want to put in there because this is basically going to be the design of all the characters that we're going to be using in the game to display text. Okay, So you just pick that one and then you give it a name. 
Um, if you already have lots of pictures and things you want to put into your game, this is also quite easy to do because you can effectively add those as existing items. And as long as they're in a sensible graphics format, then uh, we'll actually be able to put those into the game. And we'll be doing that really quite soon. Uh, so as far as we're concerned, yep, it creates stuff. In this case, we're actually making a brand new font and we're lobbing it into the game. Uh, and we can call it what we like. By default, that means unless you state otherwise, it's called Sprite Font 1. Uh, in fact, if you like, it doesn't really matter. The name doesn't really matter. It's just a handle. Um, I'm going to call it message font, though, because it's a font that's going to be used to display messages. Uh, and so once I've made it this name, that's the name I'll use in the program. Whenever I want a font to display messages, I'll call it message font. And away we go. So um, this is where it kind of gets interesting. I'll be going through all this in a minute in a, in a demo to show you how this all works. Sprite font is actually... A little snippet of data which tells Visual Studio how to make the font resource, what to do, how big it is and where it comes from. And uh, this little font is then, this little message is then used by Visual Studio to build that font when the program is actually created. And so um, it, we've, there's two things really that are kind of important here. One is the name of the font we're going to use and the other is the size of the characters. And so you can see these two things highlighted but once we've got those, and I'll do that in a minute or two, we then find that hey we've got a new piece of content, this is called message font, sitting inside my content directory. At that point as far as we're concerned the content is there. And if we ask for it, the XNA system will make sure we get our content delivered to us um, and we can just use it in our program. So, of course, the next thing we have to do is figure out how to load the content. Right. Now, we all know that computer games work in the same way. Every single game has um, a load bit where you go off and get the stuff. And then we have update and draw, which goes as fast as it possibly can to make the game look good. Okay. What we're going to do now is look at how we load content into a game. Uh, and this is all done in uh, the game in terms of uh, the load content method, of which more in a second. Uh, before we do that, though, we have to step back. Not too far, otherwise you can't see the screen. <laughs> That's almost funny, Rob. Never mind. We know about these variables we keep inside our game for the game to sort of uh, remember when we were playing the uh, the game where you increase the brightness of red, green and blue to make the screen a different colour, we knew that we had to keep a value for the red, a value for the green and a value for the blue in our game. If you want to draw text, we have to keep a value for the font as well. Okay, And so I've made a variable called font, which is uh, a good name for this variable, and it's a type sprite font. Sprite font is a special XNA type which is allowed to hold detail about what sprites look like. And so uh, I then tell the load content method to take the design of the font I've carefully put into the pipeline, if you like, and use that to make the font. And so load content is the method which will do all this hard work for us uh, and get the font ready for our game to use. Um, and it's, when we get it, fairly empty. We have a thing called a sprite batch, of which a lot more later, and a to-do. Uh, if you open up a brand new XNA game, you'll find this stuff um, lying around waiting for you to use. And basically, the uh, load content methods, another one of these placeholders, we've played with draw and update in the past. Now we're going to have a go with load content, and we're going to fill that placeholder up with instructions to fetch the content that we know our game will need. And so we have to load that font in there and replace that to-do with stuff that actually works. Okay, now this turns out to be one one line, one statement to go off and get it. We say, okay, that's where we're going to put the stuff. I want to load the content and it's a sprite font I'm fetching and it's called message font and I'm getting it from the content manager who is this thing that looks after our content pipeline. So as far as we're concerned, bottom line is we add this line of code to our program and that's all we have to do. Um, break it down, okay load in detail. At the left we have a font. This is basically, this is our variable where we're going to put the result of whatever gets loaded. Okay. Then we ask the content manager, which is a piece of the system which XNA provides with us for us for, to use for free. 
it provides a method called load which we can basically use to ask the content manager to load stuff. Now if you ask it to load something you have to tell it the kind of thing it's going to be fetching. In this case it's fetching a sprite font so we say OK please get me a sprite font and so now the load thing knows I've got to go off and get a sprite font. Next thing I need to know is I want to know what to get the name of the item to fetch and in this case it's basically a string that says I'd like the sprite font which the content manager has stored called message font and at that point we're in business okay so that's the load command kind of broken down uh, and once we've done that the font will contain the message font that we can use in our game to draw text um, as far as we're concerned load content is called once it just goes off and fetches the uh, the content we want and it's never ever called again so as far as we're concerned our job in load content is to fetch all the content which our game needs so this method can get quite big if you've got hundreds of graphics and textures and sounds and stuff which modern games do then load content may have a fair bit of work to do and that's why we always have these loading screens at the beginning of games because that's what they're doing the load screens where the load content method is basically fetching all the stuff and getting it into a form that your program can use to help you play the game and it's that's how it works this is how games actually work which is kind of nice um, what I'm also going to do though just so we know it's worked is I'm going to provide a secret backdoor message to the the, uh, the programmer to say hey this worked now this is something which you'll find very useful these messages don't appear when the game is played uh, the user of the game never sees them but we can use them as a kind of secret way the game can send us stuff that we might find interesting uh, all XNA programs uh, when they're running on the PC have a console which is uh, a place where text can be sent to the user and you can also even read things back if you want to. Uh, I just want to write stuff so I'm going to call the write line method which will display a message which says font fetched OK and that will tell me that everything has worked and so this is kind of like a little way that I can confirm what's going on and take a little look inside my program's brain <laughs> if it has a brain which I doubt very much uh, and see what it's been doing OK so we have a write line method there to drop that out and if you then look at the output window from your program then you'll see there's your message font fetched OK. This stuff up here what this is doing is actually building the game. It shows you all the bits and pieces to do uh, as the program is fetched and assembled. You can ignore it. It doesn't really mean a great deal. Um, it's kind of interesting uh, but it's not something which I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with the fact that my program has told me hey I've just fetched the font, ain't I clever? And so there you go. Um, if you want to get the output window up, it's not guaranteed to be there. I'll go through this in a minute or two. But if you go into the view box and then select output, that will cause the output message to appear. Or you can hold down control, press W and then press O, that gets your output as well. And the menu item is for that is the view as you can see there. And again, I'll go through this in a second or two anyway. So here we go. Let's make ourselves a font and use load content to fetch it. And I'll do this all from scratch. So if I just pop this out of the way, dink, and then go dink, and oh yeah, we're still in uh, we're still in the airport. That's kind of nice. I'm now going to start up to do exactly what you would do which is to start up Visual Studio and I'm going to make a new game so here we go the usual stuff file new project and I'm going to make myself oh we have a 3.1 game studio if you load the newest version you get 3.1 now as well the differences are fairly small uh, as far as we're concerned that it's not particularly hard to, uh, uh, to to use one or the other but I'm going to call this font fetch demo. I'm going to make it a Windows game. I'm going to click on OK and there will now be a rattling noise. And I've got my game. In a minute. There it is. So what I can do now, oh it doesn't quite fit on the screen, excuse me one moment, I'll just do that, is I'm going to do what I suggested we did before, which is I'm going to actually right click on the content. I'm going to then find the add and make myself a new item. And I'm going to make a sprite font, like we said, and I'm going to call it message font. You can do this all yourself if you like. Uh, uh, watch, uh, sort of follow, follow, follow my lead if you really want to. Okay, click on add, rattling noise. 
And so now, look here, I've got my message font, and here is the uh, uh, the little bit of text that tells the Visual Studio system, OK, what kind of font do you want? Now, I'm going to use a font which is called Kootenay, which is actually uh, a rather nice looking font that is installed when you install XNA. And I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to make the size a bit bigger. I'm going to go for size 50. OK? So I like size. <laughs> big text okay you can change that to get whatever you like and now having got my font I can go into my game program and have a look to see where the low content method is so let's have a little scroll down here and look there we are so now I need to find a place to put the font so we're going to call that sprite font font and I'll give it a comment so that people know what it is this is part of my game data and here I can now replace this to do with I'm putting the result in font I'm going to ask the content manager to load it and what I want it to load is a sprite font and the sprite font is called ah wrong character message font doink doink right so when that's happened, I'm now going to go right line and then we'll, we'll say font loaded OK. Right, so this is basically what we've done in the chat. Okay, so now, uh, oh, wrong character. That's right, that's better. Beware the wavy red lines because they usually mean you've done something silly. Okay, now run the program and it'll fetch the font build it 50 point size I get my blue screen nothing on the screen yet because I haven't drawn it but if I actually push that out of the way go into my view and say show me the output as opposed to show me the money which is different and I make that just a little bit bigger and then twist this down here I see the message font loaded OK so basically I'm good to go I can draw my text we'll be doing that next real soon but for now that shows you how you can put a font into your game and then pick it up inside the game and put it into a game data variable which you can use to draw stuff so I'll stop that uh, and we'll make it actually draw text next time I'll go back to my slides and we'll keep on going so, what we know so far, games contain content, images, sounds, fonts and stuff, as well as programs. And we have this pipeline thing, which will fetch the content and put it into whatever we want to use in the game. The pipeline also sorts out putting stuff onto the uh, uh, media, onto the hard drive or whatever, uh, onto, onto the CD-ROM or DVD or whatever. And we have this content management system, which is part of Visual Studio, to do all that for us. And we use the load content method to actually fetch the data. That's what actually does the data fetching um, inside our program. So true and false. Content pipeline is the process by which resources are added into a game. Do you know? I rather like that. That's going to go green. Aye, it goes green. Lovely. Uh, fonts are held in XML. <sighs> what do you think? I don't think that's true because although the font description the game uses is held by XML, the font itself is held in this true type thing and it's held by Windows somewhere that should go red and it does an XNA game can only hold one font resource hmm I don't think so I think you can have lots of fonts in your game if you want quite often a game will have a big heading font with one particular design of characters and then a smaller font for the actual text to sort of give you the story or the background that should go red and it does Content is loaded into the game by the load content method. Hmm. I'll go with that. I think that should go green. And it does. Load content is just what you want for this job. Uh, bold is a kind of font. Uh, no. No. Uh, bold is one sort of way of modifying what's in the font. So that one, if, if, if my name's Rob Miles, should go red. And it does. So there you go. Bit of true and false. Usual action. Um, you can find all the games uh, and screencasts and bits and pieces in the usual place at verycitygamescom screencasts. Thank you very much for paying attention. If you've been asleep, then I won't thank you, 
but I won't know either, so don't worry. More next week, drawing text next week. What could be more fun? Thank you.